My name is Jessica McWilliams. I'm a mechanical engineering PhD student at Penn. I always enjoyed solving puzzles as a kid, especially logic puzzles. My, um, I can remember my grandfather would always ask me a logic puzzle and I would just kind of figure it out and think through it and that was just really fun. I never really thought that that was an academic skill. I just thought it was something fun to do, little riddles and things like that. But then when I got to algebra, I realized that it was actually kind of similar to the logic puzzles that I would do as a kid. This software is called Interactive Robogami. In the center, we have a design space where I'm going to build a robot just using my mouse. And I have physical parts I can choose from. And as you can see, if I don't like the way those parts are shaped, I can change it really easily by scaling different panels. I can also add different peripheral parts so that I can make my robot look however I want. In this case, I'm going to make it look a little bit like a house. The same lines of reasoning kind of applied to it. And so I think that's really when my love for math started to grow is when I was able to correlate the two. And then as I progressed into higher levels of math, I eventually learned about engineering and realized that it too is basically solving puzzles and figuring out how to get through problems using logic and reasoning. And so now I don't solve the riddles, but I solve engineering problems. So here, I'll add a couple of those on. And if you look at the bottom of the screen, you can see that it's suggesting different gates that I can choose from. If I click on one, I can then see an animation. This is telling me how the robot might move after I build it in real life. If I want to look at a different gate, I can do that too. And if you look on the bottom right side of the screen, you can see that there's a graphic of the trajectory of the robot. This tells me how the robot is going to move through space. I can also look at multiple gates put together, and it shows me the trajectory of the sequence in black on the bottom right, and it gives me an animation in the middle. If I don't like the way my robot's moving, I can go back and modify the design. Let's make the wheels a little bit bigger. On the bottom right, the system is telling me how the robot's trajectory is going to change based on the change I made to the design. This is really helpful because I can do it all without having to build this robot. I can check in simulation that the design is exactly what I want before I have to fabricate it. In high school, I came in knowing that I liked math because I had taken algebra in middle school and just really enjoyed that kind of problem solving. So I took as many math classes as my high school had to offer. If you're interested in engineering, it's definitely helpful to have a strong math background and understand calculus and trigonometry as they're foundational to engineering. Also, if your school has computer science, would highly recommend taking that. Even as a mechanical engineer, you think of mechanical engineers and you think of hardware, but most of what I do is actually programming. We made our robot in the software, but now you can see we have it in real life. This was made using a 3D printer, and we printed out the parts, then folded and snapped them together, added some motors, which the software actually told us how we can 3D print it, and it told us what electronics we need and how to connect them. Finally, the software also gave us code that will allow the robot to move. Here's another robot that we also made using the same software. And this one, I'll show you, it actually does walk. So we can see that using that software, you can make robots that actually move in real life. So I told you that the software tells me what electronic components and connections I need, but let's take a look at actually what goes into this robot. So we can see here, we have some batteries and this is the microcontroller. Here we're using an Arduino Uno. This is basically the brain of the robot. That's where the code gets uploaded. And this microcontroller, you can buy it for about $20 and then you can write your own code for it if you want to start learning about coding. We also have servo motors that help the robot to move. So we need one for each leg. 
And then since we want an easy way to turn it on, there's just the switch that I can flip to allow the robot to have the power. So this robot is really low cost and um, that's something we focus on in our lab is using materials that are easy to get, not very expensive. Like I said, this is the most expensive part and it's about $20, the whole robot. It's very affordable. So if your high school has a robotics team, I highly recommend you check it out. And even if they don't, there might be one in your community that you can still get involved in. Also, if your high school doesn't have one, but you can find a few friends that also are interested in starting it, you guys could be the first team. I got to be a member of my high school's founding team, and it's a really exciting experience to be one of the people that's like you're really figuring out from the ground up in that case. Something else we look at in our lab is origami. We make robots that are inspired by origami. The cool thing about origami or paper folding is that you can actually store energy in the folds. What I mean by that is that if I press on this, it's actually kind of hard to compress. And when I release it, it springs back to its state. That's because the folds behave like springs. We can model how that behaves and make this cool structure. In this case, it's a head. And it's just paper that's folded back and forth many times, layer by layer, so that when you pull on tendons in it, you can get different kinds of motions. I'm super thankful for the support groups I've had as a woman in engineering. One of the only females on our robotics team, they really did encourage me to step up and become team captain. Even though it was like a little bit intimidating for me at that time. Going forward into college, I was part of a living learning program where I got to meet a whole bunch of awesome female engineers. There's others like me. And so it's encouraging to find those kindred spirits that you can really relate to. Since the folds behave as springs, we can actually store energy in those springs and create robots that will jump using origami. Here we have some different ones. And by just making small structural changes, you can get one that jumps really well. I would say that building confidence as a researcher is an ongoing process and something that I'm still learning today. I think almost everyone I know deals with imposter syndrome on some level. And definitely when I was starting out, I was like, I don't know anything about engineering. How can I build this robot? Part of it is just having the willingness to accept that you're going to learn things. 